Thank you, Debbie, for that music of music. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We welcome all to our worship service this morning, and we hope and pray that your time spent here in God's presence today will be a, a encouragement for your week ahead. We welcome any visitors who are with us, and we hope that you will come and join us again and again. A few announcements to start off this morning, and I have none other than those that are in the bulletin. As the, the day has arrived for our picnic, uh, we've been talking about it for quite a while now. I think the, the Lord has provided us a beautiful day for it. So come and join us uh, at lunchtime. Uh, any questions, uh, you can ask someone here after the service today, but I think everything is pretty much printed out there in the bulletin for us. Uh, there's a yellow insert in your bulletin, I think, at least there was one in mine, uh, with some uh, very important information on both sides. So uh, I'm not going to read through that, so uh, please uh, read that if, and uh, take the appropriate, make the appropriate response. Are there, uh, there's uh, just the offices open this week. Uh, it's the only announcement that's on there at the, the 9 to 11. Are there any other announcements that anyone has? Okay, we will begin our service with the prelude. If you are able, would you rise and join, join together in the call of worship? I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the council of the upright and in the assembly. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who 
This is 
3, verses 3 through 14. Then David slept with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. The time that David reigned over Israel was 40 years. He reigned seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of his father David and his kingdom was firmly established. Solomon loved the Lord walking in the statutes of his father David, only he had sacrificed and offered incense at the high places. The king went to Gibeon and to service there, the sacrifice there, for that was the principal high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream that by night. And God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O oh Lord, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. Although I am only a little child, I do not know how to go out and come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they not can be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understand, understanding to discern what is right. I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor all your life. No other king shall compare with you. If you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life. The New Testament lesson is taken from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 through 20. <clears throat> For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. <clears throat> Be careful then how you live. Not as unwise people, but as wise. Making the most of the time because the days are evil. So, not, so do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit. As you sing songs and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, 
singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts. Giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of God for the people. Thanks be to God. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We are so glad that you are here today. And Joyce and I look forward to picnicking with you today. <coughs> because I have the other service. We might be a couple minutes late. I'm going to try to speak fast over there and get back to the picnic grove. So. Just, um, if I could, just please pay attention to the announcements in your bulletin as far as Bible study starting to sign up. Start, uh, Bible study starts September 13th. Confirmation class starts December, or September 26th. And new members class the week before that starts September 19th. And in both churches, I'm thankful that we have some new members. So. In our scripture today, first and first Kings, we read of the passing of David and the subsequent ascension of his son Solomon then to the throne. Now just, just to point out what we've been reading here the last few weeks, Solomon is the son of David and Bathsheba. And Bathsheba, of course, was the wife originally of Uriah the Hittite. And you remember what David had, David did to him, he had him killed, and then took his wife. So Solomon is the child of David and Bathsheba. Solomon had been making sacrifices at Gibeon, and there God appeared to Solomon in a dream. God said to Solomon, ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, hey, I'm a child of king. And he asked God to give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this your great people? And God said, yes, I will give you wisdom and a discerning mind, knowing good from evil. And remember, God said, I'm thankful that you did not ask for a long life for yourself or death for your enemies. And then there's a neat verse. In verse 14, it says, If you walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life. Bruce, 45 seconds ago, you just talked about David taking Uriah's wife. But remember, people, and this is important, David did repent. He understood that he had sinned. He loses a son, Absalom, possibly because of that sin, as Nathan the prophet had said. That's the history behind this. And then David's son, Solomon, becomes king. But note that the sin is no more once we repent of it. And then moving on to what Wayne read in Ephesians 5, 8 to 20, verse 8 says, as I ended last week, for once you were full of darkness, but now you have the light from the Lord. That's the New Living Translation. Thank goodness in these trying days that we have that light from the Lord. Then we are told to live as people of the light. It produces only what is good and right and true. Friends, without reliance on the light, we don't have that good and right and true in our lives. And then it says, carefully determine what pleases the Lord. That says that in Ephesians. But you see back in 1 Kings that Wayne read, 
Solomon asked for that wisdom and discernment, and we need to pray for that as well, so that we can find what pleases the Lord, and then live that accordingly. We are then told in verse 11, take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. Remember that as people talk in the computer world, garbage in, garbage out, right? Garbage in, garbage out. If you allow the enemy in, that will be what we produce. And there are people exposing false teachers and the deeds of evil, evil and darkness. I want to mention to you right now, if you ever look at YouTube, and there's good and bad stuff, lots of bad stuff too on YouTube, but there's a guy named Dave Henneke. I'll spell it for you. H-E-N-N-E-K-E. -N -N -E -E. One more time. I'm encouraging you to look at this. H-E-N-N-E-K-E. -E. David Henneke is from Kingsland, Texas. And he sees it as his role to expose evil and false prophets amid modern day Christianity. And the way he does that is on YouTube. And I, re I recommend that you take a look at what Dave Henneke says. The scripture goes on to say, it is shameful to even talk about what ungodly people do in secret, but their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines in them, for the light makes everything visible. People, stay away from the darkness of this world. In music, I know a lot of you listen to podcasts. There's a lot of good things on podcasts, all right? And there's a lot of darkness on podcasts, too. You have to check the sources. What you're watching on television, on the internet, even the radio. Do people still listen to radio? I do every day. And even in your friendships, be careful what you're listening to. I don't think I ever said this before. When, when I was in college, and we lived, we lived in East Waterford for seven years, and uh, my stepdad was serving the East Waterford charge. East Waterford, Honey Grove, Cross Keys, Reed's Gap and a little place in the mountain called Sihop. There were five churches. But anyway, I worked my summers after high school in up on what is called Perulac. I worked for Texas Eastern Pipeline. Now that sounds good. I mowed grass. <laughs> I did a lot of painting. We tore turbines down every summer. Okay. And uh, it was hot. Tough work at times, but anyway, my point in saying that I worked for Texas Eastern for the summers, and it was a great summer job. By the way, I mean, in the summer, I could pay for a full year. My mom and dad didn't pay for it. I could pay for a full year of my room and board and tuition at IUP. You cannot do that anymore. You cannot do that. Anyway. But my point in saying that I worked for the pipeline in the summer is after I, were, I was around all those pipeliners every summer, I would swear terribly at the end of the summer. My language was awful. And my mom would say to me, Bruce, what is wrong with you? Garbage in, <coughs> garbage out. Verse 15, that Wayne read of Ephesians 5, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools. Live like those who are wise. Again, we're praying for wisdom and discernment. Make the most of every opportunity. Listen to that. Verse 16 of Ephesians 5 was said over 2,000 years ago. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Because the Bible still 
still pertaining to us? Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Discernment. Knowing good from evil. Don't be drunk with wine. Because that will ruin your life. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Singing the psalms and spiritual songs. Making music to the Lord in your hearts. Again, I've said before, and I'm not going to spend much time with it today, but I'm, I'm suggesting that if you do listen to radio, that you listen to Christian radio. I've said that before. And then Paul closes Ephesians 5 with this. And give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are we doing this, I ask? Are we giving thanks in everything? When life gives us a heat index of 107, are we still giving thanks? By the way, I did talk to people last week who liked that weather. Honestly. I agree with you, Jason. I, I don't really like it either. Friends, I want to bring this to a close, but I doubt if many of us, if any of us, need to make a full paradigm shift in our lives from my message today. But I am pleading with all of us, take a look, do some analysis, let the light of Christ shine in us as if we were taking a flashlight to our lives. My boys, my twins, turned 19 yesterday. And this coming Thursday, we will take them off to college in North Carolina. And I say, hooray. No, 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 no. <laughs> Mom is going to be very tearful. But anyway. During the time of COVID, we built them a weight room gym in our basement with mats and everything like that so that they could lift. And sometimes when the boys are down lifting their weights and stuff, they will be playing music in their lifting area and dad will walk in and then suddenly the music will go silent. <laughs> on the door that does that. I have exposed the music. And they're listening to good music too. Maybe some, not all good music. But my point is, we need to expose within our own lives what is not good. And does what we are doing daily please the Lord? In our life of technology today, how are we using it? Is it for you from the darkness or is it of the light? There is so much on the, from the dark side on the internet today, as in social media today. And I just say to you, are we staying away from the dark side? How about in your witness with technology to your kids and grandkids? People, kids and grandkids, technology is their world. I was visiting with um, one of my sick members um, at their home the other day. Um, Mark Minnick was his, is his name, and he has cancer bad. And, but anyway, I was visiting with him on Thursday, and here is his little granddaughter age one and a half, one and a half, and that little grandchild takes grandma's tablet, her electronic tablet, one and a half, and goes to Netflix, I'm not lying, pushes Netflix, and then goes to the next spot where her movies were, or little games or whatever, and punches that and is playing that. Meanwhile, I'm still trying to figure out how to turn it on. <laughs> People, technology is their world. We 
we have to we have to see that it's amazing but what are we doing with technology with them and what kind of message are we showing them both scriptures today are telling us to be careful how we live we need to pray just like solomon asked for wise and discerning hearts filled with God's Spirit. We need to pray that we would do what the Lord wants us to do and be what God wants us to be. I ask you today, what pleases you? I pray it would be what pleases God. Nothing on this earth is as more important than our relationship with now to our song of response. Take time to be holy.
nation has problems right now, just like it always does. Some of you would say we have more problems now. We don't know the answers. You try to figure the Delta variant out. I can't. But God can. God can. God is still on his throne. Praise the Lord. We look at our list there with the names of it, Denny. Larry, you did have a little stay in Hershey this week, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, just to get the numbers I right, right? I had a checkup Monday, and they kept me. Yeah. Friday evening. Okay, but they got you straightened out. Got your numbers straightened out, we're thankful. I just need a little tune-up. Yeah, just a tune-up, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, new plugs. But anyway, all right. Look at the names there of ones that we pray. We've been praying for each week. Ron and Karen aren't here this morning, but I'm going to get a report on John McNamara. How is your mother and sister, Fernando? They're doing well. Thank you very much. Doing better. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ryan Brennan, who reported to you last week, is on America's soil now and back home. That, that's another tough situation, that Taliban situation in Afghanistan. God knows. Went to visit Bob Offer on Monday. He is doing surprisingly much better. That's a good thing. Rhonda Wolfer is not doing well. She's uh, bed past now. In a hospital bed at home. She was in Hershey Hospital all week. Brian Sensney is not doing well, right? No. No. Okay. But, but I think it's not from the Yeah, Elizabeth goes 
up with the Nittany Lion this week, so in the Happy Valley. And make sure you're not too happy up there, Liz, but okay. All right. Now we, we do, that's a great thing to say, Wayne, to pray for Elizabeth. Our, our, our granddaughter, Abby, is leading Saturday for uh, New York. Alfred University, right? Alfred University that Abby's going to. All right. Others this morning. Uncle Paul's uh, daughter in law couldn't be at the funeral on Friday. Uh, she had uh, gotten away and had lost the eyesight in her eye. And on Wednesday, they took her to Pittsburgh. And Friday afternoon, she was having surgery. Uh, and they had to go inside the temple to go into the eye. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this day. And we thank you for our nation, Lord, with all its goods and bads and uglies right now. We pray for our country. We pray for our local communities. Shippensburg, Newburgh, Newville, Chambersburg. We pray for our communities. That you would give us all, as individuals, as we look in, at ourselves and we take the light to ourselves, help us to be more like you, Lord. To be compassionate and loving for one another. Lord, help us to care. So, Lord, as we give this list to you of prayer needs today, and as we send our sons and daughters and grandchildren off to college, we ask you to bless them in that transition. Lord, we train them to be independent and free. Yet it's tough when they leave. So protect them. Watch over them. And Lord, for each person that needs healing on this list today, whether that be a healing from sickness, like cancer, whether that healing be for the people that are still here who, are, who have lost loved ones, we ask you to be with them. For those who have had surgeries or, or who are going to have upcoming surgeries, watch over the doctors and nurses and the individuals as patients, bless them in your care, Lord. Father, we are thankful that you are a God. Just like when you healed Jairus' daughter, you heard prayer and you provided answers to prayer, we ask for you hear our prayers today. And I'm going to take a moment right now and ask the congregation to just be quiet just for a few seconds. And if you have others that you want to offer between you and the Lord right now, go ahead and do that. just like Solomon, give us wise and discerning hearts and help us to daily do 
what pleases you. We pray all of this in the name of the one who taught us to pray this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now bring our offerings to the Lord.
his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now, this Sabbath day, and forevermore.